Hey everybody, this is Tom Nash, and is this the beginning of the end? Yesterday was a horrible day across every single index. The S&P 500 was down, NASDAQ was down, even the mighty Dow Jones, everything was down. I thought I saw everything until the last 24 hours happened. I was bamboozled, bombarded, and spammed with thousands of questions, which all seem like individual questions, but they're all really a thousand different ways to ask the same identical question. Now, the question that everybody seems to be wondering about and obsessing about, and that's why I'm making this video, is the bad day we just had on the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the Dow Jones yesterday, is this an indication that we have hit the top? Is this the reversal? Is this the mighty correction everybody is warning us about? Should we sell everything right now and get out before it's too late? Now, obviously, I'm not going to be here bullshitting you. I'm going to give you a very simple, straightforward, and brief answer to cover exactly what's going on and how I'm handling this situation. First of all, I always tell this in my community every single day, every single morning. That's my mantra. Always start your morning with a zoom out. When you zoom out, a lot of truth comes out. Hey, I didn't know it's gonna rhyme. <laughs> when you zoom out, the truth comes out. Hey, that's mine. I should patent this or copyright it or whatever. Who cares? Um, now, if you zoom out the S&P 500, what you're gonna find out that over the past six months, we are up 16%. That's a very hot run. Now, year to date, we're still up 11%. So we're running very hot on the main index for me, which is the S&P 500. I mean, over the past 30 days, we did 4%. That's a lot. That's like 50% of the annual return in a good year of the S&P 500. So the market is definitely taking a breather. That's fine. That happens quite often. That's not what alarms me. That's not what's freaking me out. Corrections and pullbacks and breathers like this happen all the time. Now, definitely don't ignore the geopolitics mess that's going on, whether it be Europe, Middle East, or now China, Taiwan. But I don't think that the recent news from China and Taiwan with the latest mess heating up over there has anything to do to what we saw yesterday. Because I don't think anybody is pricing in that China is actually going to invade Taiwan. A lot of huffing and puffing. You know, the, I think what actually is driving this uh, really bad day we saw yesterday was a completely different reason that has nothing to do with geopolitics. Uh, yesterday, we saw the PMI data come out. And the PMI data was actually quite surprising. So not to go too overboard, the PMI data is essentially a survey of uh, purchasing managers across 20 industries. So you have supply chain guys over 20 industries basically giving their answers to what's going on in manufacturing and services, basically in the business world. Now, the US PMI actually went up to a level we haven't seen in two years. Absolutely insane. That means one simple thing, that the business activity in the United States, based on this survey, which is quite credible, is at its highest rate for the past two years, uh, mainly in services and manufacturing. So manufacturing and services is the hot pockets where everything is heating up. Now, that doesn't mean that the life of an everyday person in America gets easier, gets better. This is more of a macroeconomic manufacturing business world. Uh, life is still hard, things are still expensive, and it's not easy. But this is more on the high-level stuff. So why would this be bad news? On the face of it, it sounds like good news. The economy is doing better. You know, businesses are improving. Eventually, this will trickle down, hopefully, to the normal everyday people like us. And we'll all be, you know, celebrating this. And that's all true, but here's the problem. When you have employers, because this is what it is, employers seeing positivity, that means that their level of confidence going up. If their level of confidence going up, they will hire more people and they will pay more to retain their employees. That's going to lead to people spending more. Because when people spend more, what happens? More jobs get created, more people get hired, salaries goes up even more, and then the spending cycle starts off a very positive reaction. Now, that boosts the economy. And that might even be inflationary, which is not a good thing if it gets out of control. But what it isn't, it's not an environment in which the Fed has any sort of pressure to pump the brakes, essentially to reduce rates. Because what happens is that right now the Federal Reserve is trying to figure out, okay, when do we want to boost this market? 
Because at the end of the day, lowering interest rates means money will become cheaper. And everybody's waiting for the Fed to say, okay, when? November, December, when will we lower rates? Because money will be cheaper. Economically, it means everybody will be in party mode. Stock market will react accordingly. The only problem is that based on the PMI data we just got, the business sector in America is currently at a two-year peak. If that's the case, the economy does not require boosting. And then the Fed can keep rates theoretically higher for longer to address the inflationary impacts of this boost to the economy. That's the scenario. And of course, because that pushes back the potential rate cuts as far as the people who manage this statistics and options and all this crap about the future, the market corrects because the market is always a forward-facing mechanism. So if this data is good for the economy, and if this means the Fed will not be inclined to reduce rates, then the lack of rate reduction, when we expected in October, November, December, essentially requires the stock market to adjust downwards. And that's fine. It happens all the time. It happens more often than you would think. The good news are, and I'm going to leave you with good news, believe me, the good news are that even if we don't get rate cuts when we want them, think about it like chocolate, right? When you give candy to your kids, sometimes they want the candy before lunch. And as a parent, you have to say, well, you have to eat your lunch first. When you finish with your lunch, I'll give you the candy. Now, the kids hate it, but if they do it the opposite way, if the kids get the chocolate before lunch, what happens? The kid doesn't eat lunch. It gets filled with chocolate and 30 minutes after they're hungry again and they're cranky and all this stuff. But if you do it the right way, even though initially the kid gets a little bit annoyed by this, they will eat lunch, they will eat some candy and they'll have the rest of the day absolutely glorious. Now, this is exactly what's going on here. The fact that the economy isn't breaking, but rather getting better may postpone the rate reductions, sure, but it creates a situation where the rate cuts that will come, they will happen in a healthy environment. Because if you go back in history, what you will find out is that whenever the Fed reduced rates because the economy broke as a reactionary matter, that didn't lead to a long-lasting stock market rally like everybody's hoping for. But when in history, the Fed proactively reduced rates, when the economy was strong and they were not forced to do it, they wasn't basically in a situation where they had to reduce rates to save the economy. They just did it because it was the right thing to do in a healthy economy and everything was great. In that scenario, in these circumstances, the stock market rallied. And this is exactly what we're getting here. We may be postponing the rate cuts, perhaps, I don't know, but we are creating a better infrastructure. So when these cuts come, they land on a good economy and send us up as far as the stock market long term. You don't want empty calories. You don't want rate cuts because the economy is breaking. That's going to give you a short spike in the stock market, but then a crash, just like chocolate. Now, I will also give you a little piece of statistic here. Look, I know it sucks because we might see a 3, 4, maybe even a 5% correction right now which is due on a breather because every time the stock market gets too hot, it gets cooled down. So we may see three, four, five percent pullbacks, but let me just call you here to order and explain to you that these five percent pullbacks happen a lot. They happen at least three times a year. So we already had one five percent pullback. Cool. We're about halfway there in the year. It's time for another one. It's nothing out of the ordinary. Please don't be alarmed. Don't be fooled by all this drama and hype. We all do it sometimes in the media. We get it. But I'm here to tell you, this is a nothing burger. In fact, this is better than a nothing burger. This is actually good news. PMI data showing this, a two-year high, basically sets us up to a really bullish position when the rate cuts do come. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you can do a few things. I don't want you to click nothing, subscribe to nothing, none of this. Number one. Join our community, discord.gg slash Tom Nash. It is 100% free to join. There's nothing to pay to join the community. Now, for those of you who actually want to join our academy or become a member, check out our Patreon, the Patreon.com forward slash Tom Nash. We have a bunch of plans there for new Patreons to join the academy or join the community, join the membership. And for those of you who haven't yet, we now offer a special 25% off on Stock MVP. 
That's going to be a limited offer for the next 24 hours. Tom25 is the code. You can get stock MVP right now, stock-mvp.com. You can analyze your own stocks, run your own DCFs, find out which companies are real and which are not, which are shit, which are legit, and everything will be okay. I'll see you in the next one.